You ready? I think so. Yep. I think so. Let's do it. Welcome to the Sofa Kingdom podcast with your host, Nelson. Ian. Ed. The whole squad is here. We are ready to rock. We're going to jump Wait. into some shit with Eddie without I his forgot. hat. I forgot my hat. No, it's too okay. fucking bad. It's, all right. it's too bad. You right. can't I start it over. I literally just noticed it. <laughs> is this Ed or is this a I, different multiverse oh, Ed? I believe shit. it's, it's on... It's we can on see the it. table. We can actually, head. we can see the hat. <laughs> Would you like me to late. call it forth? You're I, not going to fucking I, get up for no. anything. Listen, okay. <laughs> I'm not getting up for as much as possible for the next five weeks. So let me He's got me like explain. a legit like, m- like leg brace on. Like. Absolutely. I got like full on from the bottom of my ankle <laughs> to the top of my thigh. <laughs> He's walking around the studio looking like a Spanish whistler. <laughs> 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 when I'm outside, people start like humming like pimp music and shit. You know, like I should get goldfish pumps and a uh, cane, you know, a little purple velvet outfit to go with it. You know, I got that pimp walk. But, I actually uh, started watching those uh, those Blade movies again just to get ready for the, the Marvel's new launch of it. Hell Ooh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Listen, I, I still think I still think Blade 2 is my favorite out of the three, but it had some sketchy special effects. In it. it did. It's, it's been a while since I've seen any of the Blade movies. But they were the best of the Marvel made movies back they then. They weren't for children either. No. Yeah, and no that's what made them no. good. No, right? they're good. They catered to the adults that liked comic books. And they got away with it because, why? He's a vampire. There's yeah. also some weird sexual chemistry in the first movie between Blade and then later he finds out his mom's alive. And like she's all tied up and she's touching him weird. I was like, what, what's happening here? I was like, wait a minute. I missed this. I missed this when I was a child and I saw this. I was like, what's happening here? What's the name of his handler? Whistler? Whistler is the guy I took yes. care yeah. of him. Yeah. I That's thought you were going to say between him Spanish, and Whistler. Spanish, Spanish, whist, Spanish Whistler over here dragging his leg around. Yeah. I really thought about you. Yeah. I was like, and I see him like dragging his leg in that metal brace. I was like, oh, it's fucking Nelson. I was like, I'm going to say something about yeah. that. No, I, uh, I tore my uh, meniscus. Uh, it's a horizontal tear. Did it. Uh, training uh, jujitsu, knees no, over toes, guy. No particular incident. I just think it's just beaten, battered body, <laughs> <laughs> and continuing to train even hurt. And, Time does what it does, and and that's what happened. So, I'm gonna take a little mini break, heal my body, and then uh, from there rehab it, get my physical strength back, and then come back and uh, dominate some motherfuckers. Well, so. thank God for video games. You know? <laughs> yes, yes. You got some stuff to do in your spare time. Yes, you know? and that's where Tiny Tina's Wonderland has come <laughs> into play. I had not delved, but I hear good things from everybody yeah. around me. It's, it's fantastic. I'm really enjoying it. They built on top of the Borderlands franchise yep. with the little add-ons and, and the changes that they made to make the gameplay more fluid, to make the transactions within the gameplay more fluid, as well because did you even notice that the vehicles were gone yes yes like huh. is it is it oh, something no, I that mean, you like, even like i don't miss the vehicles yes. i don't know anyone that's like oh the vehicles but i love them no they're like oh yeah i i guess they're gone yeah. I, did, I did i did enjoy some of the uh vehicles in the third game in the third game when they had all the crazy customizations like you yeah. could sit in a wheel yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that some of the some of them were actually creative it's, it's not that they were bad it's just that they really weren't Need it. No, no, no right? not with quick travel. There's no, no once yeah. you get to a place, there's no real need to. Yeah. yeah, we we all want. That's the one piece of technology I think we're missing in society. Or Borderlands, it's give us travel. a flying vehicle. Oh, Borderlands Four, let us yeah. fly. Yeah, let yeah. us fly. Give us something that flies around. I I, I would I wouldn't <laughs> mind that at all. A flying claptrap. Um, oh no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Now we've gone too far. So or like, ticket. like you take Claptrap like an R two D two android and you sit him in the back and you're flying around with him. Or yeah, he sits up <laughs> on top. Back. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. that's All fair. Right, yeah, that's fair. That. I can deal with that. Um, I I'm enjoying it. Um, I like the gameplay. The mechanics always been uh, great. They deliver with that. The storyline is really funny, and uh, they go in hard on. Uh, no no spoilers, but you know Borderlands always dives into making fun of other um, great things. sense of humor oh yeah. yeah yeah so i mean you get to murder smurfs there's yep. a whole God. quest for oh, yeah. fighting smurfs oh no mm-hmm. uh there's a witcher quest garrett of trivia garrett of trivia, garrett of trivia. <laughs> <laughs> no oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um th- there's a couple of really <laughs> I'm gonna, good I'm ones gonna in have there to get this. I'm that you have to get this. you would definitely enjoy uh they make fun of skyrim all day long yeah so many little skyrim jab of the knife <laughs> twists into well, the guts. Skyrim deserves it. It's been around for how long? Yeah. Skyrim is still... Yeah. I mean, they'll probably have another it's, version before. It's over six. 10 years at this point. And, and it's yeah. done with good taste because 
they're funny. I played enough Skyrim that I'm noticing all the little stuff. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm enjoying it. I don't yeah. know. What about you? Playing anything? Uh... I, I just started Outer Wilds. I'm only a few... I'm only like an hour in. Is that PC or is that... Uh... No, it's, it's, it's on console as well. Okay. It's got a nice art style. It, it looks to be just like a giant puzzle of a world. There's some time mechanics where you repeat stuff and you have to figure it out as you okay. go along and whatnot. So I'll see how it is. So far, it's, it's not too bad, but I haven't gotten far enough in to really start having to delve into any of the actual puzzle of the world that you're, you're dealing with. Sounds like nothing I will ever fucking play but you know, uh, <laughs> to each their own i mean i loved well, portal hey i right that was my that's as far as i like to go for a puzzle style of a yeah game. i remember back in the day mist mm-hmm. mist was like a puzzle game and that was like oh man that we're talking yeah. like 90s like early yeah. 90s that was like a computer game but mm-hmm. i made it on like the sega Saturn, yeah, or something like that. It was one of those early. And I remember my one of my friends, my mom, was like into computers, and he would play that and everything. And what is he playing? Like <laughs> he was just traveling around this island trying to get out, and there were these brothers trapped in these paintings. It was all kinds of crazy. See, you know, I'm an Oregon's Trail kind of guy. Oh, <laughs> well, if, talk, talking about nobody's making it. <laughs> everybody's dying. Of everybody's dying Terry. on this motherfucker. Uh, everybody gets dysentery. <laughs> I mean, talking about those old games, um, the old game developer oh, Sierra. Is actually after like a thirty-year hiatus, mm-hmm. the original uh, developers they're coming back and they're creating games again. Um, they started doing it over COVID because they were locked down. They had nothing better to do. It's a husband and wife duo, mm-hmm. um, and they had started doing it. They started bringing people in to help because it started becoming a bigger thing. And then as they were bringing in people to help, they're like, "Cause that style of adventure game just isn't being created anymore." Yeah. Um, it, it really, what style would that be? It, it's the older style first person. There's a little bit of like, um, just kind of wandering around and figuring out what the puzzle even is mm. and, and, and that kind of a thing. Um, and it actually really lends itself to, um, headsets. So they're actually going to do, you know, 3D games and things like that. It's going to be an Oculus. It's also going to come out for like PC to and, really immerse you and Mac. World. Okay. Yeah, so they're they're kind of taking one of their um, one of their older games and they're redoing it from the ground up, fully modeled out. They got like a, a small team that they're all putting it together. They just did um, a game the game conference and they did a whole little interview on a, a YouTube channel. A uh, game collector guy called uh, Metal Jesus Rocks. What a name! What a name! <laughs> he, he's an old. They work with Jack Black. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Sounds, sounds does, like something he would be in. Yeah. He does. He does have a band. He also used to be a game dev, but he's a monster game collector. When I mean from like the beginning of gaming all the way up until now, like hit like his entire house is your living room. So like. It, Jesus Gamer goes well with yeah. his name. Because <laughs> him and his wife are big it. game collectors. So their whole house is just shelves of games and collectibles and all of that kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. But So it's, so it's interesting to see kind of, because especially in the 3D space, there's not a lot of good games to play. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's nice to see someone who has like 30, 40 years experience in games coming in and actually bringing something that, Wow, yeah, those types of games would have actually probably been better on a headset in sure. 3D where you're in a room and you're looking around and you're trying to – it's almost escape room-esque the but way those games what? were. It's nice to bring some variety back into video games because I feel yeah. like everything is like – Not just a shooter every year. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another Call of Duty. Jam it in yeah. your fucking throat. That's, <laughs> and, that, and that's why I downloaded to play Outer Wilds because it's not the type of game I would have normally played. Right. And I, I did that with Hades. Uh, you know, I was on the fence and your brother talked so much about it that I had downloaded it, and yeah, it was probably my favorite game last year. And it's game. a game quite that game. I would not really have played because it's not a style of game I normally enjoy. And it's good that, like, Shay gets one victory out of ten mistakes. I mean, you I know. Mean, it's yeah. amazing that <laughs> he could be wrong about so yeah, his, many <laughs> his, things. His inaccuracies on the show yeah. is astounding. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes he makes corrections to us, and we have to be like, yeah, Shay, we gotta give you, you got one. us, but... We got to give you that yeah, one. Yeah, we'll give you that one. <laughs> you got there that you go, one, guy. So. <laughs> Please don't kill me. <laughs> 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 
no. sometimes sometimes old is good though. Because I yeah, tell you what, yeah. I've I've had a PS5 for a week now. That's nice. literally what I was gonna ask. Congratulations! And I have sir. only I have only played a PlayStation One game. <laughs> I have only been playing Chrono. all the power, Chrono, but I've been focusing on Chrono Cross. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I I have just lived in my childhood, man. Why not? I man? got I have Assassin's Creed Valhalla and I have Tales of Arise for the PS5 mm. just sitting there, waiting to be uploaded. I'm waiting to join the new generation. Not yet. No. Nope. Hey, listen. <laughs> let me let me keep my to- let me keep That's my toe right, in the man. water. You That's know, right. I'm playing PlayStation One. Are games. they are they still giving away like those uh, 20 games when you get the console, or was that just for a, a time limit thing? There was something like that for like downloading them, you yeah. The digital copies of them, but I, I'm I'm kind of you know I'm all right. It's you're enjoying you, the game. You haven't you haven't right even now. bothered it's too much to power. look at. It's too much power. It's I, like <laughs> twenty of Sony's greatest hits. You're like yeah yeah yeah, but but this this PlayStation this, one game. This one game. I need this is what I, I want. This one right game now. I haven't played since I was a child. <laughs> Listen, I want to play this. I'm with you because as soon as they release S S S X Tricky. You're on it. Fuck everybody what? else. <laughs> I want that and Need for Speed Underground. Those are the two games that I really, just want really them, want back. Want them updated. You can yeah. get the old version. I think it's like five bucks for the old version. I did. No, you can't. You. I did. I play, can't buy SSX. Tricky. Oh, the All tri- the yeah. other ones are available. A bunch of the others are there. I did just play. Um, it's on Game Pass. Shredders. They tried to. Ninja Turtles. No, no, no. It's just no- <laughs> it's it's a it's a snowboarding game. It's a cheese grater game. Um and it's it's nice that it's a snowboarding game made by snowboarders, but uh and the game looks gorgeous. The controls are just a little wonky muddy. Uh, like you didn't feel like you were getting the yeah. response as quickly as you would want it yes. for when you were trying to p- kind see, of put it but in. But see, this is what I love about SSX Tricky, that they in future iterations took away from like i wanted to play the snowboarding game but i wanted to have the fun of the tricks and the over the top yes. it was fun the music was fun and then they're like we need you to go to this slope and do this and i'm yep. like no i mean that's cool graphics wise but i was like kind of took away from what i liked about the game it was just fun and silly and it was all about the tricks and now it's like yeah you know, you got to climb that's, this yeah. mountain. That's why I like I, – I used to play Cool Borders. Yeah. And one of the ones I dumped a lot of time into was Cool Borders 2. Mm. I love that freaking game where if yeah. you did enough tricks, you could unlock this alien named Gray. <laughs> <laughs> you could slide down the, the, the hill on this, like, little spaceship. Nice. And he was the best He was the best with tricks. You couldn't beat him if, if you went against him with tricks. And then if you, like, beat uh, all the tracks at a certain time, you could unlo- unlock the snowman. And he was the fastest. <laughs> he would slide down the hill on this piece of wood, and you nice. literally couldn't beat him. Like, even, stuff even, like that but stuff like that fun. is fun. It made the yeah. game fun. But stuff like yeah. that is gone now. Now to unlock something new, it's a microtransaction. $45. Yeah. yeah, you want that? You want that car in Gran Turismo, forty to forty-five dollars because fuck you. That's that's the only excuse. It's it's a giant fuck you. It's yeah. almost the price of another video game. Yeah, yeah. So you got to pay full price for the game. So it's not like it's the game is free and you can play. You got to pay full price for the game. You can't just buy the card anytime. You get a, a notification. Hey, this car is available for you to purchase. Then you only have so many days before that purchase goes away. So within that number of days, they estimate it's like 20 to 30 hours. And this for is, this the, is the new Gran Turismo. This is the new Gran right? Turismo. Mm-hmm. Right. So the average player takes at least 20, some of it's 30 hours to get the money to then buy the car. Right. So like you get your notification, you got a few days, and all you have to do is you have to no life it to get the car before the car goes away because it's, so it doesn't stay open. basically don't work, don't pay your bills, yeah. don't talk to your family. Fuck <laughs> then, you, Gran Turismo. Yeah. Then... <laughs> Um, they nerfed how much in-game money you can make off playing the game, which makes it even harder to just play the game and get cars. And they also made it where you're not allowed to sell your old cars. So all the cars you do collect, if you get bored of it or if you're like, man, I really want that one car, you can't even sell the old cars to buy a new car. Too bad. You're stuck with the car. You're stuck. Exactly. It's just... It I sounds mean, like they're taking a page out of real life casinos. Yes, yeah. where like it's the system is rigged in a way where you're gonna have to spend that money. Yep, in, an, in to get what you want. The house, I, the house always wins. I yeah, mean, and it's fuck. it's normal to see that in the free to play games, especially mobile. Right, they love to force the game mechanic in a way where you have to end up spending money to stay relevant, and that's why they make them multiplayer they want to force you to a group 
so that you feel beholden to the group. And if you can't keep up with the group, well, then you got to start paying. That's that's generally where a lot of those games end up functioning. And they really are doing that with this here, where they're really taking that mechanic and they're forcing it into a full price console is game. Is this the first of the games to do this? Not out of Sony. They've been doing some shady things over the last few years with the microtransactions. I mean, it's do not... Do you think this is because they have to pay <laughs> Tom Holland to be <laughs> Spider-Man that they got to come up with extra revenue <laughs> streams? <laughs> Tom, Tom Holland is just bleeding so dry. <laughs> He's bleeding them dry. He's like, I don't care. You make another game, you make those microtransactions, then you get me my fucking money. <laughs> And then he smiles on the screen like, just your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. <laughs> no, it, it, it comes down to this. They had, they had, they had so enough. Daniel needs a new yacht, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> they had enough of a lead off the last generation. And they had enough console exclusives that it put them in the position where they have players that are going to pay no matter what. And they got enough players that will pay no matter what that they can start doing anti-consumer practices and the players are still sticking around now you can only do that for so long obviously but and and, and it seems like a bad business model right gran turismo this this was the most egregious some of the others you were like eh, that's kind of shitty but okay eh, we get it it's new generate eh, you know so I haven't, I haven't played gran turismo since gran turismo 3 so i haven't played yeah it. i haven't played gran I, turismo I since around. playstation I was never really 1. a fan i liked Forza Motorsport. Yeah, the more better. arcade versus the simulation. Yeah. And I also liked the Need for Speeds franchises, but like, uh, yeah, I never really got into Gran Turismo or any of those. I thought, I thought Gran Turismo 2 was better than 3, but, just because there were more cars. I know a lot of people online are really, uh, they're really putting this on par with the messaging mishaps the Xbox One had when they were going into launch, right. where they were forcing, you know, the peripherals you had to get them because they, they were trying to go into a new level of gaming so they needed everyone to have it and sony really stepped on them and then that, that game show sony made them look like assholes every which way right and it, it really gave them a massive head start into the next generation and that same stumbling a lot of people are kind of putting on par with what sony is doing recently with the gran turismo yeah, they're Forcing like it's. To buy cars. Yeah, they're yeah. like it's going a little for a full price game. It's a little much. It's one forty five dollars yeah. seems really fucking excessive. Yeah. It really yeah. does. Especially, it's not like you're especially, even getting like a season pass. I wouldn't play it. It's just yeah. one. Car. At one car, you're paying 40, 40, 40 bucks at least, and that and then it's it and it's it's so obvious because the ability to, for the car to be purchased goes away. Right. So they send you a thing saying you can now get this car. But then after a few days, it goes away. So you literally, if you don't, if you just got something or just use whatever you jump on it, you don't credit, it. exactly. If you use whatever yeah. credits you had for something else, whatever trials you're doing, you literally, you just, you're not going to be able to get it without spending but, money. But this seems like gamers need to push back. At the end of the day, it's bullshit. So as don't a gamer, buy game. don't buy the game, don't yeah. play the game, don't make the microtransactions. You can live without. I stopped yeah. playing fighting games because of the way they were doing that with the season passes. Yeah. None of the characters were, were special characters that you unlocked right. after just playing the game as like a reward. Yeah. Every are, new character to win was, suck. was a yeah. fucking DLC. Yeah. I mean, Injustice doesn't do that. Because well, it's because the character that they're amazing. already building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they actually... Superman. Uh, they, you do the season pass the way that they do it, I... I don't hate it. You can unlock some characters, and basically, what they make you pay for mostly, like after the season pass, you do a season pass, and they'll give you like four to eight characters. But if you want to pay for the special, cool-looking suit and stuff like that, yeah, then you could put your own money into it. Um, you want the Christopher Reeves version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want the Ben Affleck <laughs> Batman? I mean, who the fuck out, wants comes that? Comes out in the wheelchair. You want the Ezra Miller, not in jail, <laughs> Flash? I, I just you could get that version if like, you. <laughs> I, I would the like Homelander serving, the Homelander <laughs> serving life in prison. The, the, yeah, the Homelander beating up you know innocent civilians I, for I no fucking reason. Version. Sure, you can get that guy. <laughs> I they, would like to they're see. They're canceling uh, Ezra Miller's Flash now too. Well, he keeps getting arrested. What the fuck is wrong? He he's a weirdo. How about we give the role to someone who's not a fucking weirdo? Yeah, yeah. listen, the guy from the WB. I don't know his name. The actor. Yeah, give it to him. Anyone. Yeah, he he's did fun. great. Anyone can be a better Barry Allen. Yeah. Anyone. <laughs> Any, and anyone. Listen, just throwing this out listen, there. Barry Allen's supposed to be blonde. They can flashpoint hey, him the fuck out it. of his own think movie. Yeah, they think can flashpoint him the he fuck come, out. He comes back and it's the dude from WB. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, wait, you he know ran so great? fucking fast, he turned to somebody else. <laughs> what if they turned the flash into Ben Affleck? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm for it. 
They're like, you know what? Flash Fleck. I'm for it. You know, because we already seen a blonde Ben Affleck in that movie with oh, the, yeah. uh, the Knights. Uh, fuck. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, fuck. The Last Duel. The Last Duel. Yeah, bring bl- blonde Ben Affleck as the Flash. <laughs> I would pay to it. see that. I would laugh my ass off. I'd be like, you know what? This is what the general public deserves. A big or, F you. just to piss Ben Affleck off, we make Matt Damon the Flash. Oh, that would oh, be even better. Yeah. And because he would probably make it successful. Oh, absolutely. Do like a born identity <laughs> version of the Flash, though, absolutely. too, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, back to the Gran Turismo thing. I think for real, gamers need to lobby behind themselves and just got to start pushing back. Like, we can't sit back and accept all this bullshit. Like, the season passes, okay. If you're giving enough content and that is the game you like to play, fine. Because what's happening is you're limiting gamers to picking one, maybe two games that they can really the, y- y- afford yeah. to play and be involved with. Because after the game, you're probably spending an additional 80 to to $100 a year in additional content to play the game that you want. Yeah. Um, and stay relevant in the game that you want, especially yeah. in this online atmosphere. Um, outside of that, it's like now if you're paying forty five dollars a car, imagine if you played Mortal Kombat and they're like, "You want Arnold Schwarzenegger?" <laughs> That'll be forty five dollars. Forty five dollars to play as Terminator. I don't, yo, for that much money, Arnold Schwarzenegger better sit in my fucking living room <laughs> yeah. and show me how to do fatalities. This is where I'm about to no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, back, back forward, you idiot! Come on. <laughs> yeah. oh. Better show up to my house once a week and be like, "I will pump you up." <laughs> <laughs> that's where, like, I didn't find it for me. Because I, I don't know. I haven't seen a game dev explain how much work goes into adding a character to the game versus a full-fledged DLC like Tiny Tina's looking to do. With yeah. their Game Pass, they got multiple DLCs they drop. And I know the Borderland games, the DLCs they drop are usually huge. By the yeah. time you're done, you have a whole second game, essentially. Right. Which is funny because actually the whole Tiny Tina's like fantasy thing started out as a DLC for yes. Borderlands uh, 2. It yeah. was uh, Tiny yeah. Tina's attack on uh, Dragon Keep or something. Yeah. yeah. And then they literally made a whole game out of it with Tiny Tina's Wonderland. And yeah. now I can't wait to see what they do with the DLC. It's probably going to be creative. Yeah. And Borderlands actually- always has legendary. Uh, uh, DLCs. Oh yeah, it'll be Ridiculous coming out pretty boss. soon too. And even as Borderlands like, has some of the craziest multiplayer boss fights ever. Oh yes. like, yeah, like you need four people <laughs> maxed out. Like, and even then, even if you're all skilled, you're still probably gonna die. Oh like, yeah. yeah, some shit. The is most going unf- down. unfair boss fights I've ever had were in Borderlands. <laughs> <laughs> from Avoris the Invincible, Terramorphus and the still, Invincible, still for me, it's, the it's Invincible. Lost World. Lost World has had some, and I've never played Dark Souls. That's why I say Lost World. Oh, th- well, that, that, that's different. That's a different level of hard. Lost World that's, has some that's, extremely <laughs> difficult bosses for a shooting game. I, I literally, I bought Sekiro. I bought it. I thought to myself, oh, it says it's a faster paced Dark Souls. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I, pl- I think I dabbled in Dark Souls once or twice. I, was, I remember it being really hard, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to try right. it. Yeah. I bought it. I think the same fucking day. The same day, I brought it back to the same GameStop. <laughs> and I just looked at the guy. Like, with my eyes, I told him. I was like, how? I'm never. How the fuck did you let me buy this? <laughs> <laughs> like, in the, in the five or six hours I've owned this game, I've yeah. died hundreds of times. You know like, what? fuck this. No. You, you know what? When you go to buy the game, the guy behind the counter should take, let me see your hands. No, your fingers are not nimble enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Next. He'd be like, before you, buy, before you buy this game, like, I have to do a reflex test. Like, yeah. You have to take the quarter out of my hand. Like, like, He's like, I'm going to have to see your uh, your, your achievements. If, you, He's if like, he can close got- his hand before you can take the quarter out, you can't buy second round. And it says here you got 500 gaming achievements in the last four years. Yes, sir. This game is not for you. <laughs> no, uh, no. Bring out Sims yeah. for this man back here. <laughs> I'm, I'm- I'm sorry, sir. You have no platinum trophies. You can't. Yeah. You can't purchase yeah, this yeah, game. No, this you, is not for you're you. You're not qualified. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and it's interesting because you see that with Elden Ring, because um, it's very much in the vein of a Dark Souls game. I can play that now. And I, nice. yeah. So I know I for myself, I was excited to see what the game would be, and I deliberately waited because I know what the Dark Souls games are like, and I wanted to see how much of a Dark Souls like game it was going to be. And it's like, oh no, it really is. Like if you get a mission. There's no map markers that tell you where the mission is. There's no map markers that tell you how to get back to the guy that gave you the mission to turn it in when you're fucking done. You walk out into the open world, and you know what it is? An open fucking world. Get a pen. Get a piece of paper. You need to write down the missions you're given. You Enjoy need to the journey. Mark some shit down for wherever you think it might be and things like that, which 
it, it's a it's a type of game which I I, I get it, but I play games to relax. Yeah. I don't need homework. Where yeah. I need pen and paper to write down. Uh, mushroom man <laughs> under big tree <laughs> mission for so and so by mountain in yeah. general direction that I don't. <laughs> yeah, troll yeah, in like swamp that. cave yeah. needs a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Got it on it. So I on I, it. I know they did. <laughs> I Hope know you're they not did on the dildo. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, well, I, get, I get it. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Let's wait till I find the dildo first. But that was I reserve a my very room. enthusiastic <laughs> on it, on it, <laughs> <laughs> on it, on it, on it, in it, on it. I know, I know. They did add some things to the game because the game in general is getting fantastic reviews. Ten IGN um, called the masterpiece. So, so, and I know they add. I think they added in some level of quest marker type things because so. some people they. For accessibility reasons, some people can't play certain games certain ways. But even then, you're like, well, this is the type of game that accessibility is in, in the difficulty alone is going to make it an issue. Yeah. So you have two sides going on with, with kind of the post story of this game is people like for exclusivity, like there's things that this game doesn't do. There isn't an easier mode for people to have issues with maybe reflex timing I like because games, they yeah. have a neurological issue where they can't move their hands as fast as necessary to even play the game. I right. like games that are hard. Like, I like a challenge. Like, right. for instance, in God of War, I, I, def I went, took the time, went in there, and fought the Valkyrie Queen. You know? right. I remember when I fought the Valkyrie Queen, my girlfriend at the time thought I had a heart attack because I like, literally screamed from <laughs> the middle of the night. I just screamed <laughs> through the controller. And I, I had died so many times against her. But the thing is, it's okay to put hard challenges in the game and make the game more difficult and have more difficult modes, but the whole game should not be yeah. insane difficulty. Like, like yeah. Sekiro, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't yeah. even walk through the world because something is going to fucking kill me. Like, <laughs> it could be a plant. It could be like yeah. a random soldier. A random soldier walking down the street could just murder you. Yes. Like, and, and I was like, this is, this is not And other fun. games yeah. have done harder modes like that where you go in the options menu and you turn off your mini-map. Ghost of or, Tsushima yeah, has a real right. mode where if you get shot with an arrow, you're, you're dead. fucking dead. Yeah. Yeah. If you fight somebody and he hits you once, you're dead. Yeah. The yeah. whole game. <laughs> and, and, and it's interesting because you think of someone telling a story, they want to tell that story to as many people as possible. But this is a game that's not necessarily about telling everybody a story as much as it's about the difficulty of just playing the game. So in right. and itself, it's a different aspect of the art of video games and that's where the developer decides what kind of game am i making and who am i making it for yes this isn't for as many people as possible this is for this chosen few that yeah. i'm looking for and some of the videos coming from the boss fights in elden ring are ridiculous like yeah. there's the one, i was watching a video one streamer i follow and, and like the boss turned like disappeared turned into a meteor and then crashed into the battlefield. Oh. I was like, what? And like, if you get hit with your dad, I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm breaking my controller at that yeah. point. Like, instant, no way. Instant kill mechanics oh are God. always just like, oh, come it, on. The boss was There's gone. Shit. He was fighting him and the boss like disappears. I'm like, what? The? I'm like, what? where'd he go? And next thing you know, like you look in the sky and there's this orange ball and it's the <laughs> fucking boss and he comes back onto the battlefield and uh, kills, like if he hits you, you're th dead. That's you're dead. Great. I was like, great. well, this is, I seen, uh, that's something the developers like. Yeah. I, mean, I seen a guy that had an arrow he was shooting from like one mountaintop across to one of the bosses yeah and he was apparently he was streaming and he was doing it for like two hours or some shit like that he finally kills it and like as he's like getting down off his cliff to go collect like his shit he falls off the <laughs> fucking oh. mountain <laughs> and no. he had a reset no so you lose shit in this yeah. game when you die and, and, and you, if you, you die, lose some of your souls. shit yeah you lose oh. everything you so like, like like the things like whatever you gain as you kill the villain, you need to get to a checkpoint and save it to right. to then or you don't have use nothing. it. So he fell off. So that meant he lost everything he did. Not not just losing the time and killing the guy. Like the reward of killing that that villain is now gone. Yeah. To yeah. me, to me, I remember old RPGs had lots of like things that that would that would frustrate the shit out of you. And one of them, to me, this is this is still to this day. Like when I think people think of annoying challenges, like hard, difficult challenges. I think of Final Fantasy X, mm. and the one thing I think of in particular is when you're trying to get everybody's ultimate weapons. Mm. Yeah. And I, there's this one black mage in the game, Lulu, and in order to get her weapon, you have to go to this lightning plane, and the lightning on the PlayStation 2, like, the lightning will, the screen will flash. Like, like, it, like it, <laughs> the screen will literally flash like a camera right. when lightning's about to strike, and you have to hit the X button precisely as the screen flashes yeah. to dodge the lightning bolt that's coming afterwards. <laughs> right. 
which is fine. You can dodge <laughs> two in a row, three in a row. In order to get her ultimate weapon, you need to dodge 200 lightning bolts Holy consecutively. Sh- oh my God. Consecutively. If so, you're st- and, and they strike maybe once every five to ten seconds. And they, give or take. They don't tell you. It could be right. five or ten. They don't they've use- done that lightning in other ga- in other fan- Final Fantasy games as well. 200 <laughs> times. And I shit you not, you're sitting there like this. Sweating balls. Yeah, sweat's dripping off you. And, and literally, if you get to 140 and all of a sudden you – one fucking misstep. One, one – and the X button, if you hit it at the wrong time before or later, you're fucked. Lightning yep. hits you, back to zero. I can see relationships <laughs> Oh, dude, no. I, right? I, because you're there and you're like, 199. How many times have I told you to shut the video game off? I've done it once. Just, one, just yeah. give me a second. And then, yeah. be, oh, God no. damn, I'm talking to you. I missed the lightning. Get out of my house. But, yeah. <laughs> I've done it once in my life. And literally, I I promised myself, even the second, third time I played through, Final Fantasy X, Lou just ain't getting her all through weapons. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, that's it. It's fine. Yeah. I can live with it. I can I, live with it. I yes. did that when I just, in the, Not in, happening. in the recent Yakuza game I played. Um and the game was great, and the story was great. And like towards a dra- like a dragon, yeah. yeah. And, and towards the end, uh, you go to fight the one per- particular guy, and I knew it was supposed to be a difficult fight, so I knew I needed to do some grinding. And that that got that is something that I have gotten tired with with games, where it's like if I'm playing the whole game, every side mission. And every tiny little thing, I shouldn't really run into a an item where I now have to go spend three hours in a dungeon to level up my guys. I've played every piece of the game, mini game involved and everything that I could do. Why am I not strong enough to just walk into this fight and have a reasonable assumption of a victory? Right. Right. Like it, it, it be, and See, even I'm, I'm, I'm sick in the head. I like, even, I, like I love grind. Yeah. <laughs> I used to. I used yeah. to. I, I mean, there's I, something I, cool about it. You know, yeah. You just, you like, yeah. With the Dragon working, Quest yeah. games, I, I used Watching to your character get find, level. find me a spot with metal Marvel slimes, Ultimate you know, Alliance. all day long for a while. But like at Dragon, a certain point, Dragon Quest is infamous for it. Dragon yeah. Quest is infamous for yeah. having your guys go to find an island. With high level enemies, yeah, I, camp your boat out. All right, <laughs> I got my items. I'm gonna grind here until I, I'm a I fucking think, monster. Yes, I think yes. Dragon Quest cured me <laughs> of wanting to play games where you grind. Where, like, if, you I don't don't, mind, if you don't grind, yeah. you ain't beating Dragon and Quest. And I don't, it, I don't yeah. mind it for a little bit, but when you have to do like multiple hours, it kill becomes, the metal enemies. It becomes a little like you gotta kill the metal enemies. Right, this yeah. is this is a little much. And and even with their final weapons, I had like. Because uh, you have like seven party members, yeah. I had like four people where I had their finals. I'm like, well, you four are going to be the party. You're my team. <laughs> Fuck it, that's it. I'm not. I'm not going to go crazy for the other three guys. I'm not. It's yeah. not happening. I'm just taking these guys. We're going in like this. No, uh, I mean uh, Marvel <laughs> Ultimate Alliance. Uh, that one area, that bridge where you're fighting all the Asgardians. Yeah, over yeah, there. yeah. I think I played that about a thousand times we, to we, level up. Yeah, some of the characters uh, <laughs> <laughs> at the training room. They had yeah, like three the training, maps. Yes. There was three maps where you could just go in and grind but even then, and get the most. Out it of wasn't it. too yeah. bad. You could jump in and you would walk out of the room with like two or three levels. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that's fair. It'd yeah. be like five or ten minutes, and you can really just like run through, level get up. to the end, and you'd level up guaranteed. One, which wasn't too terrible. One interesting thing. Well, then you. You might want to check this out. The game I've been playing on PlayStation 5. One game I've been playing, Chrono Cross for PlayStation 1, the one with the renowned soundtrack and all that. There <laughs> oh, is no we gr- know about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? There is. There is. With a little bit of candle. A bet's a bet. There is There is no gr- no grinding at all. None. Nice. Zero. Nice. In, in Chrono Cross, literally... You only get star levels, which signifies your levels, 1 to 99, okay. um, for boss fights. Nice. That's it. Anything you do in between, you can do for tiny stat improvements. But yeah. once you, like, every time you get a star level, say I get to, like, level 15, you can do a couple fights in between with regular enemies, mm-hmm. but they will only increase your stats a little bit, and then it stops. Yeah. You can fight battles, and all you get is items for, like, alchemy and stuff. You don't get anything to boost your stats. Okay. So it kind of diminishes grinding. Yeah. And they, the one thing with the new version they released for the PS4 and PS5 is you can turn off random encounters completely. Mm. Yeah, because they're, just walk they're through the irrelevant. Game and boss the boss fight. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to get the story, the random encounters, they made them essentially irrelevant. Yeah, the only time right. you use the random encounters is if you're trying to get, like, rare elements, rare items. Okay, right. there's certain enemies you can go fight, farm, steal yeah. elements from, things like that. But other than that, if you're an anti-grinder, 
Chrono Cross so, is your RPG. All right, so what would so. you guys say is the game you spent the most time grinding on? What would be the game you spent? Oh, Me, boy. it was too human. But I loved every second of the grind, trying to get those. I believe it was legendary or epic, or I forget the actual terminology, to get that complete suit. Yeah. For me, it was as a kid, um, not understanding the full like scope of grinding uh-huh. yet. I mean, I remember when Final Fantasy VII first hit, way back in the 90s when I was playing it. <laughs> I was crushed by Emerald Weapon and by Ruby Weapon. They both just annihilated me. I had no idea. The internet wasn't even like around. To look <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I, I, get the, you couldn't the understand books. the scope of an enemy <laughs> with almost a million health. Yeah. And, like that would just wipe your party out instantly. So I was just grinding in the meteor crater right before Sephiroth. Yeah. Just like as a kid, like tears streaming down my face. I had my Mountain Dew, just like, uh, like just trying to get myself to a level. And I finally ended up beating Emerald Weapon and Ruby Weapon. But the grind was just stupid. So that was stupid. Your game. Yeah, I put I put hundreds of hours into Final Fantasy VII think, as a kid. I think Legend of Dragoon. It was a, f- a four disc game. It's supposed to be the Final Fantasy VII killer. Yes, yeah. really. Legend of um, Dragoon. Yep, it was yeah. an American RPG. When I when I got to the end, everybody had their final weapon. Everybody had all of their attacks unlocked. Everybody had, you know, level ninety nine. I was I was that, maxed out when that, I walked that in. That game had a really good battle <laughs> system where you had to yes. time the box. Yeah, that had, it was you like if you, if you were better at timing and you could match your symbols up, you would get a you lot could, more damage. You're gonna get more nice. damage on, on on yeah, and every kind of like fighting game meets. And yeah, as you would RPG. use them, it would open up other ones. So the the more you did it proficiently, the more you'd be rewarded with stronger attacks, right? With more difficult timings for you to figure out. I, I can't think of her name, but I always like the girl with the giant ice hammer. I can't think of her name. But yeah, that, that, she was <laughs> like, my favorite character. <laughs> I, tri- I typically stay away from girls with giant ice hammers. <laughs> they're that's right. Me. They're that's right up my alley. This is, me. This is me. I see an ice hammer. I'm like, mm, I don't want nothing to do with it. <laughs> Speaking no. of that, the Northman comes out. <laughs> oh, the Northman comes out this week. <laughs> Beautiful oh, transition. Speaking of girls with giant ice hammers. Oh my yeah, god. The I, I will be there opening night. You know, to watch a movie about my people, I'm so excited. I'm down so to excited. go and share your love of your people. It oh. looks like a great movie. I hear, the trailer was fantastic. I hear good things from it. Yeah, yeah. it got yeah. an 8 on IGN. They said that there's a lot of, like, visionary art stuff that he put in. But the director, Robert Eggers, he directed The Witch and stuff like that. So he does do psychological stuff. I mean, yeah. that was a horror movie, but it was like a and weird, trippy, revolutionary supposedly era. Supposedly, it's also the most accurate Vikings movie. Yes. They, oh, said, okay. they said it's a lot of cultural stuff. A lot of symbolistic stuff, yep. and it really gives you the feel that you're in a Viking I'm saga. Down. I'm down. Yeah, but they said there there is a lot of visionary stuff, like Viking stuff. Like they they were really into their spiritual and religious stuff, and so there's symbolism from like the Valkyries and yeah. the undead. There's like a scene with a Draugr. I saw that from the one thing. I was nice. like, oh, that's like one of those yeah, undead. I believe it's this guy's. It's his third movie. Yeah. yeah, two others critically acclaimed. They were much smaller, much more claustrophobic. Fi- they were almost a, like single room style. They got William Dafoe. So. Yeah, so and He's so he, he wanted creepy. to do uh, yeah. something a little bit different, and he he ran into uh, uh, what's it called, Skarsgård there. Yeah, um, and uh, convinced him into doing that one, and so. Oh, this, this is his third. He did the yeah. witch. Um, which was that horror movie in the 1700s in the woods, and then he did The Lighthouse yeah. with Batman and... Um, Willem Dafoe. And William Dafoe. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's why William Dafoe's in it. Yeah. So, so Supposedly uh, that was a good movie. It was just different. Like those two, it was psychological yes. and artistic. Right. Well, that's kind of like, I haven't seen The Green Knight yet, and it's a mixed bag for people. Everybody's saying it's a great movie or it's a really yeah. shitty movie. I, I've, I've, a lot of my film friends say it's a good movie. It's worth watching. It's for, like the cinematography is amazing. And then I have friends that watched it thinking it was going to be an action movie. And, and they it said wasn't. it was a pile of shit. <laughs> right. my, my one friend said it was one of the worst fucking movies. Yeah, he's ever like, seen. But like, he's like, also the type of guy that probably watches yeah. lethal weapon and jerks off. So I mean, <laughs> he's one of those guys. I, I, I mean, the cinematography has got to be good. It depends on which lethal weapon, but it's also got to have Jet a good Lee. story. Okay. I mean, you know, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. He strangles people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He takes guns apart with his hand. Yeah, Ooh, you know, that, that's, that's sexy. Yeah, that Jet Li with the beads. That's old uh-huh. school shit. Yeah, when All he, right, when yeah, he yeah. first came on the scene. Yeah, okay. What kind of beads? <laughs> <laughs> if you have to ask. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, so let's see. For me, I've been watching Master Chief Halo. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I'm liking it. Uh, it's getting mixed reviews online. Yeah, I see I people understand. either love it or hate it. I don't let's understand see. why. 
um, because it's they're giving you a version of Halo more or less on the characters and developing the characters themselves. Yeah. It, you know, I think they were trying to stay away from my understanding of like making it a video game move a uh, show about sixty nine percent of Rotten Tomatoes, not bad. The video game. Yeah. I, I think it's well done. I like what they're doing with it. It doesn't feel like you ever seen Doom with the Rock? Yeah. Oh. You know, like they get <laughs> yeah. into third person oh. shooter mode. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> like no. Uh, they have some of their game moments where they do a little fanfare and they, you know, they show you the weapon that you want to see, or they do some. That movie could have been a lot shots. better. It could have. It could have. I'm liking it. Like the cast so far. I mean, there are some weird twists and turns without giving any spoilers away that they're doing with like side stories that yeah. could honestly not be there, and I wouldn't give a fuck about those characters. Focus more on Master Chief himself and his group of Spartans. Is there any alien sex scenes? Three. Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, there are none. 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 Yeah. none. They've showed uh, Master Chief's ass, and of course, uh, and people were mad about that. <laughs> what? Like, Master Chief has an ass? <laughs> he has an ass. <laughs> it's, Why? It's a legitimate ass. We don't need, we don't need this. <laughs> but if they showed, if, if it was, there was a Metroid movie and they showed Samus's ass, everyone they'd be all would, about the rage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. of course. Ooh. There'd be a line of it, you know, but oh. these are, you know, fans. And what an ass it would be. They fucked up, <laughs> you know, Master Chief was their wet dream and now they got their, the ass shot that they were looking yeah. for. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I, for one, am intrigued at the yeah. prospect of Master Chief. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good show, liking it. I'm hoping that they build on it and it doesn't get crushed because of, Fans not giving it the chance to develop. Good, even as like a PlayStation, you know, alumni, I I still will support Xbox trying to get their Halo yeah. series. Off the ground. I'm a fan. I, yeah. It looked interesting, you know. Hey, I think for the God amount love, of money, God, God listen, love. the God amount of love. money that they're spending per episode, they're gonna finish at least a season, and then at that point, you can judge it Red from light, what green it is. Light. Yeah, yeah. Venom. Thank God they killed Cowboy Bebop though. That was oof. that yeah. was hard to watch. Yeah, yeah. I still haven't even bothered to take a look. You know what I else I haven't finished is The Last Kingdom. Really. I got it to episode four and then I quit. It's good. I'm listen, done. Listen, I quit. I, 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 listen, I quit. It's good. It's good. It's, it's just not Vikings. The last season is It's not is Vikings boring. Valhalla. It's not. No. I'm sorry. Vikings Valhalla is a better show. They upped the ante in Vikings Valhalla. Tired. And so by the time I got there, I got to episode four. I'm like, this is great to fall asleep to. <laughs> <laughs> so let's put Uhtred this way. Uh, Vi- Bebin, uh, yes. Vikings Valhalla is Coca-Cola and fucking Last Kingdom is RC Cola. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But you know what? I would finish RC Cola. <laughs> <laughs> RC had enough caffeine to keep you up. <laughs> there you go. I could get through a couple RC. I don't know if I could get to the last episode of The Last King. Yeah. I'm trying. One day, I'm sure I You'll will. Get there. I will have. When you uh, have nothing else. Time. Yeah, you got some time. I got some time, but I'm spending it playing Tiny Tina's right now. <laughs> so, yeah. And the DLC is dropping like in a week or two. As soon so as this I'll podcast is over, man, I'm going right back to grinding and Chrono Cross. I got some elements <laughs> to catch, man. I got some elements to trap. <laughs> Woo! I hear that. I hear that. What uh, else? What else did we watch? What else? Did trailers. We... What do we got on trailers? Fucking Stranger Things four. Mm. That oh looks. Good. I haven't God. seen any of Stranger Things, but that that trailer. It's like, I have to catch up. If you were a fan of sci-fi or 80s horror, yeah. you need to watch yes. Stranger It's Things. like E.T. meets... Uh, it's, a, it's a love letter to 80s, t- 80s movies. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. That yes. much I know, and I've, I, I have was, managed to not really get any spoilers thus far. As far, was, as, far as popular as the show is, I, I've not really run into like people deep diving the whole yeah. show or I was so like hesitant that. to get into it when I first started it because I, mm-hmm. when I saw the show started I was like what the hell is there a bunch of kids yeah. like little kids I was like what the hell am I watching this show about these children for it's really good yeah, yeah. the oh, development Goonies, of the, that's what I was gonna yeah. say it's like yeah. E.T. meets Goonies the development of, of the girl's powers the way it gets into yeah. alternate worlds and this last season it looks like they're setting up some kind of cosmic Lovecraftian yeah. war yeah, it looks I like know, they brought Sarah up. Jessica Parker in as <laughs> yeah, the main villain, the main villain. <laughs> So Amazing. it's gonna be good. It's Amazing. gonna be good. The way they did that tentacles. Wow. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice tentacles, Sarah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. And those are her real tentacles. Yeah. They in did case not. You were wondering. That, in case you were wondering, yeah, they they're not stunt all. tentacles. No. Not CGI. <laughs> no. She she allowed herself to be filmed without makeup for the role, and I appreciate that. Really no is. filters whatsoever. <laughs> out the, if you guys don't know what we're talking about. YouTube Stranger for, uh, Stranger Things four trailer right now, and you'll see all about it. Yes. Sarah yes. and all her glory. Now <laughs> an, another movie. That we've seen trailers that looked very promising, but I haven't gone to see because people have been shitting all over it. 
is Morbius. I yeah. won't see it. Yeah. I, I'm going to wait I for believe, it to come. I believe the reviews. I I'm, believe I'm waiting it. for it to come to home yeah. uh, to watch it, and then I will watch if it. If they release it on an HBO Max or they release it on Disney+, Plus, I'll, I'll take a peek at I it. I think if they deliver it to my door in a DVD <laughs> for free. <laughs> That, that like was, Jehovah Witness. That was exactly, and I will then watch it. That was exactly what I was worried about with this movie. It's it. Yes, it's a Marvel character, but it's not being looked at with the grand scheme of the Marvel universe, like all the other Marvel movies that have been done. This one is purely being done by Sony. Like the Spider-Man movies, Marvel has their hand in because Spider-Man right. is going back and forth into the Avengers and the Marvels movies. But this is Sony all by themselves right. and their production. The same thing they did with all the other things that but keep falling through. But why can't they through. get it right? But they, the they fucking did this. playbook is laid out. They did it with Venom. You yeah. can't right. do the same thing again. Okay, you got a dark Spider-Man here. Okay, cool. Let's go in a different. Why, they when they picked Morbius, I was like, right. why Morbius? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, is it because they're gonna throw Blade eventually no, out? No, right. it's, why? it's because they only have the the licensing to Spider-Man and. Spider-Man's villains. So let's think here. Which, so, which one of Spider-Man's villains could Jared Leto have probably done a better job as? I don't I mean, fuck. Even if they did a lizard movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, why Morbius? What the fuck are we doing? Like, Why Jared Leto is the bigger question. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I don't hate the man. I was really hoping that it was going to be good, but it's got such trash reviews and, on and, it. That and, yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to the I'm not, I'm not spending my money on and, and it's another yeah. one where it sounds like, uh, I mean, we were watching something and, and a thing that popped up was like, mm, I think editing is an issue here. Yeah. Which is what happened a lot with the Joker where he portrayed where you're like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter what you put on film is if they go through the film and they pick the shittiest parts of the film yeah. to make the final product, yeah, it's going to be a piece of shit. Here, Here's yeah. another thing that Sony, I think, is making the right move for this. This is finally something I agree with. They want to do the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, but they said they would like the Marvel Studios to produce it. Oh. So. <laughs> that sounds smart. proper. Yes. Good they're move. like, all right, we're fucking it up. Let's give it back to you guys. Like, I, I think that at is this somebody point, just got to be like, listen, we fucked up so much. That's a much. studio head that watched, take it back. that watched Morbius and went... Jesus, do we have to put this out? We spent how much on it? Yeah. Call, call, uh, call Marvel, call Disney. Yeah. Tell them we need help with the next Spider-Man again, to please. My, to my understanding, <laughs> to, my, to, to my understanding, they they really went as far as when the fight scenes were happening. You really couldn't see the actual fight scenes. That's this is what a big part of the problem was. That's what we want in our superheroes. Yes. They went into darkness. Like, it was so dark and convoluted with special effects, like pixelated special effects and mm. I haven't seen it so this is just hearsay yep um, that you couldn't enjoy the fight scenes because I think they were really trying to avoid an R rating with blood and gore because he yeah. is they a need to stop that because we've seen slashing motherfuckers we've seen yeah. that it was Deadpool that you can make an R rated Marvel movie that's yeah. successful yes yeah. and with Logan yeah and like Take the kid gloves off. I think they really fucked up when they did the Venom movie with Carnage and didn't make it. I mean, right. yeah, let, it could have been it's way Carnage. better. It is Carnage. It's, he it's, is literally violence and Carnage. It's canon yeah. that the symbiotes need a chemical to live, and the chemical is in the human brain. Mm -hmm. That's where it's most abundant. That and gotta I, I eat believe, some brains. I believe chocolate <laughs> brain, is yeah. is another thing. Yeah. But it You're ends up being like, hey, their food source is human brains. You're they're not, you know they're who else fucking eat, zombies. You know who else eats brains? <laughs> Hannibal Lecter. You're going to put Hannibal Lecter in a PG-13 movie? <laughs> I didn't fucking think so. You know who else eats brains? Sarah Good Jessica Parker. Parker yes. <laughs> and you can catch her in the Stranger Things <laughs> trailer. trailer, yes. <laughs> At the very end there, I'm telling you, you can't miss her. You can't miss her. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I think uh, they need to go in a different direction. No more Spider-Man villain movies. Stop. Yes. Yeah, and you can even it. see Disney is slowly, slowly pushing that bar. I mean, look at... Because they realize Moonlight. that they can deliver the, they can't deliver the story without some realism. Yeah. And if you're going to continue with fan favorites and go into deeper storytelling, they're going you into have to darker make characters. It adult. They're going into films. a lot darker characters now. We're talking about Blade. We're talking about Moon Knight. We're talking about the Black Knight. You're talking about characters that, nights. that delve yeah, a lot of into darker areas. It was. Um, <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> uh, I'm drawing a blank on what the line of, of comics was, but they had uh, a, a line of comics that was that they the they, Illuminati they marked that was like no these are just oh, they're generally more adult, Marvel dark more darker comics in general. So and these are all characters from that kind of line of comics. I remember they Dark even, Horse comics, but that was they had a lot of yeah. 
Uh, I say Aliens and Predator yeah. was one of their I say bring ones. back Spawn. It's time. Yep. It's time where we can get a real time. Time. I was just going to ask yeah. that. Movie. Spawn, Spawn is in his own universe though. No, no, I know. I know, but you can make it rated R. I thought you they were, do I thought they were doing that. I thought they were they doing a rated R They should bring back Spawn. They've, they've, they, 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 oh, they, ever since the first Spawn movies, they've talked about bringing back Spawn, but so far it's it's not happened. Yeah. They can. They really, really can. You know what would be another sleeper hit that I think that they're fucking not doing is a Turok Ooh. movie. Now, Dinosaur Hunter. Turok, Dinosaur yeah. Hunter. Right now, look at Jurassic World, right? You know, the the franchise is coming to an end. You still want to fuck with some dinosaurs. Yeah. Bam. Two rock. <laughs> okay, so and Native Americans. Bam. Yeah. Oh. Another another plus. Okay, so the word on the street from Todd McFarlane himself, it says there's a spawn reboot film has been in development for several years and now uh there's an update straight from the source. Todd McFarlane said the upcoming film is coming along nicely and just hit a milestone by attracting another big name to the project. So it is in development. Okay. Okay. And I'm, I'm all behind that because Spawn is one of my favorite yeah. heroes. I think, I, I think it's forgotten of how much work goes into getting a movie on screen. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're talking thousands of people with how many hours behind just every little thing that has to be finally done for it to sure. get there. Well, you and, need the voice for Spawn. Yeah, And, and it can't be Michael Jai White. It's got to be – I'm trying to think of the other guy's name. Um, he, he was Rock? Uh, he wasn't in Ghostbusters. I'm trying to think of what he was in. Um, he was the he was in Gargoyles. Chris Rock's brother. <laughs> None of the rocks. None of them. None of the Fuck. rocks. Are um, Terry Crews. He's a big guy. Ooh, Terry Crews. <laughs> he, he could be in the suit. Oh, the guy that played the, the someone kingpin? could be Al Simmons. The guy Terry that played Cruz the kingpin. Al Simmons. The guy that played the kingpin. Uh, Michael uh, Michael Clark Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to go again. <laughs> I was trying to. You're not going to be. He's going to be. Come on. He's not going to be. Come on in. The water's fine. <laughs> Keith David. Keith, Keith David was the voice uh, of Spawn. Listen, it, it, it's Idris Elba. Done. Oh. Make him everything. Idris Elba can be Al Simmons, but his voice yeah. isn't really. Because he's, he's, okay. already, he's yeah. already been Spawn's in Marvel. Spawn's not British. <laughs> I like him. I, I like him. Or you can. Uh, Crocky. You, what, what's, what's the kid from uh, Creed? <laughs> Oh, um, Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Michael B. Would, Jordan could be Al Simmons. Yeah, He's that would be a, up. yes. And and then when he turns into the dead spawn, Keith David takes over as the voice. Fuck yeah, <laughs> got it. The guy from the Nine X commercials, or oh oh no, Allstate. Excuse me, Allstate commercials. Is it Allstate? Allstate. Allstate. Yeah, he does, he no, does no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. I know, that's not cool. <laughs> He's got that. He's got that somber voice. Like you know, he could sell that shit. Yeah. I Jeez. mean, or, or Roseanne Barr. <laughs> Roseanne Barr plays one. I'm in. I'm Violator. In. She's the voice of Violator. <laughs> she the Violator. Yo, she again, the clown. no filters. Clown. No CGI. <laughs> Roseanne Barr just plays clown. <laughs> Roseanne Barr is the, the Violator. Clown. Yeah. <laughs> no, but John um, Leguizamo did a good job, though. He did. Yeah, I thought did. I thought he did a good job, but yeah, Spawn can come back, and I think people are sleeping. I think Turok could be a fucking great. Uh, comic book Just outside of the box. Don't release into. it the same week as Jurassic World 10. Yes, yes. You know? The only thing there's is, an, I think an, I think one. people are looking at trying to do full universes like Marvel is because that's the only thing making money right now. So doing a a a character that has their own singular universe that limits how many movies they can kind of get out in a calendar year. You only get one like every two or three but years I, if you're right, doing. Spawn. But I, I think it's I think they're thinking small. Like you when you open up. Let's say like Guardians of the Galaxy when they took off after Iron Man took off, then they were like looking at oh we can bring in other characters that people really don't know that they're gonna love until we put them on screen. Yep. You open up something like a Spawn that does successful, you can open up that universe to more characters, right? Well, the thing image, is, Spawn Spawn is he's his own universe, right? Yeah. But there's enough characters within that universe. Where it could be a big enough franchise on its own. Well, no, because that was the thing with Image Comics. They weren't, they weren't a combined universe. They were right, individual no, characters. You're making the Spawn universe. Yeah, there, which there's, it's, it's basically the Spawn people, and people, like a dozen bad guys. No, well, the people, no. What the about people the that Valkyrie? created Spawn? The there's the that, whole series of Valkyries that they fight with the Spawn. Too. Well, the, the people that created Spawn, a lot of them were people that, like Image Comics, like you yeah. said, they were spinoffs of DC and Marvel. Yeah. They were people they that were the Max. Right, remember the Max, the purple guy with the yeah. big teeth. Yeah, but he was Blade. Which Blade was also no. They had Blade. They, right yeah. there, there's a there's a good group of them where no. they can form a universe if they wanted to. Well, the thing is that 
they would be making a new universe then. Fuck because it. Because they're they they. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> from we got to get anything yeah. outside of the DC universe right now. All of them are if fucking. I, if failed. I remember correctly, yeah. they were all individual universes. Because what happened was when they made Image Comics, it was a bunch of writers and artists that wanted to take have actual control over what they made. So when they made a thing, they don't they wanted to own it and not have Marvel or DC own it. So they spun off and they made their own company. So all those comics are owned by the people that were writing and drawing them. And I don't believe any of their universes ever actually cross. So if they wanted to go that route, they could take all those image comics and make them into and all it takes Batman, own one. their own I universe. Batman fought, the, fought Predator one time. I remember that happened. Yeah, like, listen, there there had been crossovers. There was. So right now is a great opportunity. But who where, like, owns image right now? I don't know. I don't know. But but what I'm saying is there is an opportunity to bring other unknowns and then there's a market for rated R adult rated comic book movies that really hasn't been tapped into too much outside of like a Deadpool. So here's a great opportunity for Spawn to come in and then say, "Hey, let's pull these franchises together, make another universe and have some fun with it." Uh, there was I just want to see Superman say fuck. <laughs> Because there was a lot of there was a lot kill of somebody. Um, what else do you want? <laughs> there was a lot of um, comic companies that kind of collapsed and folded into the big guys. But I'm not sure if yeah. Image Comics well, is completely. There was another. Yet. There was another. There was anymore. another comic book, and I, I don't know if it's the right name. Uh, Wildcats. It was like a western. I wonder like the if guy that with the red grifter. Paint. Yeah, Ajax, bro, yeah. they were good. Let's do it. I mean, they tried. They tried bringing in Wild West shit too, like Jonah Hex, but they just did it bad. That was just another one that kind of like was that Marvel or DC Jonah Hex. Jonah Hex, he is on DC. Yeah, that was another one that kind of like came, failed, and there, nobody talks yeah. about it. It's well, been they shunned. they they had him on the DC shows. They brought them back. No, I know into the yeah. shows, but like as far as like a big movie, yeah, no, it it, it didn't really take yeah. off too well into the general public. But I, I think that's also part of the problem is they they're trying to movie establish an established universe. They don't want to because they even tried. They even were starting to try to do the old Hollywood monsters and reboot those, and that was the movie that um, uh, the Mummy one, where the new the new one that had failed, right. With uh, Image Comics, do Saga that one that Shay likes the science fiction? Yes, Alien Space. So Image Comics is still around and doing strong. Yeah, they're still around. Yeah. Wow. But, and they 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 do adult shit. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, here's a lane that they can fit into, and then establish like, hey, we are the adult superhero shit. Let's go. Spawn rate it was R. super Let's adult. I mean, yeah. some of the things in Spawn were dark as hell. I mean, you're right? dealing with hell. Well, but, I mean, Billy, that's, <laughs> even <laughs> even that, even that, like Billy Kincaid, like some of the villains and shit in Spawn were dark. Yes. Like he was literally Sweet Tooth from Twisted Metal. Like he yeah. drove an ice cream truck. He murdered kids. He was a monster. Yeah, like, Spawn was a very, yeah. He, he, he dealt with some serious stuff. Right. And so so did the Ghost Rider, though. Yeah. yeah. Right? When you look into the, the different variations of the Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze and all that stuff, like he was vengeance. Yeah. Before vengeance was vengeance. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> He's more, more vengeance than Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely was. But I'm a rich guy in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> here's a dark character, right? Super dark. And what do they do? We know the perfect guy to play this Nicholas super Cage. dark. <laughs> who, by the way, is willing to come back and play Nicholas Cage. Oh, abs- absolutely. Ghost Rider. Uh, well, supposedly his new movie is fantastic. Uh, that I want to see. That that's his lane. See. That's his lane. Yeah. Egghead. When does that That's come his out? lane. Yeah. Bring him in as Egghead. He wants to play Egghead, Egghead in the new Batman uh, series <laughs> as a villain. I'm like, yeah, do it. Um, here's your opportunity to... Uh, just find some more that they could fuck with in the superhero world, I think. 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, I want to see it. Is it out already? No, it comes out April 22nd. Damn. All right, I, I want to see that. Yeah, I'm, all hearing, I'm only hearing good things about it. Yeah. Well, people like Nick Cage. Like, even if you don't like Nick Cage, I think you're forced to like him. <laughs> he has just one of those. He just has star quality. He's yeah. just like, for no other reason, you're just like, I like Nick Cage. I thought Matt Hilton, our dear friend Matt Hilton, I thought he was a nice guy, you know? Uh huh. We messaged him. I messaged him earlier after we watched the new uh, Obi Wan trailer. We're getting excited for it, and I said, "You look like Ewan McGregor because he kind of does. You know, yeah. there's a Ewan McGregor thing going on." Right, there. right, right. He literally just texts me back and says, "You look like Jar Jar Binks." <laughs> <laughs> 
Hold on, I gotta get in on this. Well, well I, I was, be like, you I know was, what? was I gonna was just... go see your show tonight, Matt, but I guess you know, <laughs> don't go see him playing at fucking Stormhouse Brewery tonight. Fuck you, Matt Hilton. I'm, I'm not gonna <laughs> George or binks it up with you. Yeah, don't go see that little you and McGregor clone fucker play his guitar. God damn it, Matt. <laughs> Jar Jar Banks, really? Nobody else. Trying to be nice. He couldn't hit me with Qui Gon Jinn or anyone. You gotta, you know, no, you look like look, look at that. You look like Jar Jar Banks. He sent that today. Damn man. Thanks, okay. man. Okay. All right. You know what? You look like Jar Jar Banks. Wow. wow. <laughs> he does but, look like Ewan McGregor. You know what? Let's talk about this. I look like mm-hmm. Jar Jar fucking Matt Banks. Hilton, <laughs> I'm, I'm the a, maker I'm, of the theme song for Sofa Kingdom podcast. Looks like Ewan McGregor. He does. He's yes. a handsome little guy. <laughs> if Ewan McGregor was bald. He is, yes. Ewan, Ewan McGregor and Matt Hilton are both the same height in real life, which is three feet tall. <laughs> 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 he is an actual hobbit from the Shire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nicest man in the world. Really great guy. Just super short. <laughs> Eddie, I think you had to get a booster seat for him the last time he was here. Yeah, and just a couple of we nine necks. We, <laughs> you know. we folded some towels. He was <laughs> He's actually played as an extra in the in the in the series that we were talking about earlier, uh, uh, Stranger Things, <laughs> for one of the kids. <laughs> one there. of the kids. <laughs> Sadly double. enough, the kids have grown, and now he can no longer play as an extra. <laughs> 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 Jesus, Matt. <laughs> we love, we love. We do, we do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another show that uh, I've been liking is Moon Knight. Yeah. Um, I like a lot the, going on there. A lot yeah. of like uh, yeah. archaeology and uh, absolutely. It, I love it makes Egyptian you think. mythology. It makes you I think. Really love that. Clearly, line. clearly, there's another personality. I don't know a lot about Egyptian mythology, so yeah, kind of like. There's a third one in there somewhere. There's clearly definitely somebody a third killed one somebody, in there. and yeah. neither of them know about it. Yeah, nobody like knows some, who's doing yeah, it. Just and like, if you want to know what the fuck we're talking about, watch the show. Yeah. Yes, goddamn right. Don't yeah. wait for us to tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least I hope not. No, I like the Egyptian mythology. I've always been into uh, mythology as a whole. And I just so don't I know like any of the gods in Egyptian it. mythology. I know oh. Greek. I know Norse, but I don't know. I believe. It's I believe. Deep. There's because there's. I think there's supposed to be nine for the pantheon that they're dealing with right now in the comics. I think they only showed like five on the show. And I believe at one point in the comics, they even like the realm they're hanging out is almost like their Asgard. Yeah. Like they have their own version of the Bifrost Bridge. They call it something else. It's like okay. uh, the Avenue of the Gods or some shit like that. What and, it's, if? and it's how they get to their area where yeah, they nice. hang out. What if they're all real, but they're all just called different names? <laughs> you know, what if they're, they're really up there you know? yeah, that's, yeah. that's literally how Marvel did it When they started running into issues of Different creators running into different pantheons Was Okay uh, so just give them a bridge And it's going to look eerily similar to their bridge yeah. over there And we just call it a day They're, they're yep, just yep. kind of like A higher being and kind yep, of deal A lot of they're how here. mythology is played off In movies and comics is like they used to be almighty and powerful, but when they lose the power of their religion, they're following. And they're following. I just don't get how they lose some of the luster and their actual power as a god. I don't get. I don't get how they're so damn stupid though. And here's here's my thing with that. Oh, the trial? Yeah. So they're so they're god. They're gods. <laughs> that was they're, shame. They're, I've been at a real yeah. trial. A, yeah. I call mistrial. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's the word? Hubris. Yeah. I mean, if you're they're god, full of them. And I know you. Yeah. I know you're not in the realm anymore or whatever, and you're living on some other plane. Right. You kind of want to let people do what people do, but. You're holding a trial as to whether or not this guy is trying to resurrect this god that you don't want resurrected. Right. Look at zero evidence. Right. And, but can't you look? Can't you like just look at this patch right. of desert where he's <laughs> digging and be like, "Oh, that's where we buried Amit." Like, I mean, here's the fuck. thing: is that they are so <laughs> yes. all knowing and omnipotent and. That they're full of themselves. They're all and knowing they, except for this patch right, of desert, right? Right. <laughs> like, and they, and we... No, they they hate him so much. He's such a known troublemaker that they're just looking at him like, you're just a pestilent little child. Yeah. He and is, we're not looking into it. And I would like to say, if he was moving the stars around like that and like the moon and shit, Pretty dope. it would affect people's bodies a little bit. Yeah, it, it, he would have killed a lot of fucking yeah. people. And and it, it affects the tides. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, and that's why I said, 
and because we were talking about this earlier, I said it's. I believe it was more of an illusionary ability where he had moved the perception of where everything was right, yeah. versus actually doing it because then that would have been fucking time travel. Right, right. He didn't time travel. If he could time travel, he wouldn't pick the asshole with the glass slippers as his previous avatar. He would go to somebody else. Yes, correct. It's an illusionary ability because if he could do that, he, then he's extending way more onto the universe. He wouldn't right. need someone to be the fist of vengeance for him. It was just Agreed. basically him moving the kaleidoscope around. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't actually time travel or moving the tides and stuff. He was just like, I'm going to move the sky and the constellations in a way that we could get this map that you need. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, you know, I, I like the show. I think it's pretty dope. And I hope they deal with more of the Egyptian mythology where I learned most of my Egyptian mythology <laughs> is through a show called Stargate. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. That's where I found my love and my affinity for Egyptian mythology. Ball, one of the greatest villains on TV ever. Is one of, the, you know, <laughs> by far, one of the best TV fucking, like, you loved to hate him. When he came on the screen, he delivered this masterful performance of, like, I am a god, you are beneath me. Even when he's, like, getting beat up and like losing <laughs> clearly losing he's still like i am still a god <laughs> you are beneath me <laughs> like the boots in face and he's just like i will not die <laughs> you know like he just had this thing about him he was so fucking smug game of thrones had that too with joffrey joffrey every yes. time joffrey came on the camera you're like i just want Oh, like, but this, uh, that, not, that, not that I'm a fan of punching kids that, in the that face. Poor, that poor guy that played Joffrey had so much hate yeah, after the really? show. Oh, it ruined his quit, life. Yeah. He quit acting because of people not realizing it's fake. <laughs> it's a TV show. Now, that's good acting. It, yes. That's good acting. <laughs> that, yes. You did such a good job on that show, kid. Yeah, people that actually people hate fucking you. hate you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like he goes to get a loan for his house like. Get the fuck out of here, John. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> you horrible, horrible man. You shitty, no. shitty king. But you. the real villain is the fucking kid in the wheelchair. <laughs> you leave. People Bran. should hate Brandon Stark. <laughs> hate that motherfucker you instead. Leave, you leave Bran the broken alone. For ruining my fucking show. He is the king of Westeros, and only, you will show him respect. There is only one boneless in my heart, and it is Ivar. <laughs> <laughs> that guy did a good job, too. Fuck that guy yeah. was a very good oh, actor. Fuck yeah, he did a good job. That guy was a very yeah. good actor. All right, here's where we're going to end. If you had to pick one villain, right, and that you just loved to hate, okay? Your favorite villain, besides TV. Besides Joffrey, okay. Right. Yeah, besides from, from – no, you can pick Joffrey if you like. Oh, one villain that you love to hate that you missed, um, and I'm going to start with uh, – it was a show called Heroes. Yes, and there was a man by the name of Siler. And before they, before they nerfed him, him and fucked him. The first two seasons of Siler, he was fucking fantastic. I love – he was a serial killer. He was a murderer. And how he would get his powers is by opening up the heads of people with powers, studying their brains, and then he would steal their power. And he was a fucking badass. And it was just him versus, like, a team of misfit heroes – that they had to form a team just to fight him. He was so fucking strong. Yep. He was so maniacal. He was so evil. And then they fucked up his whole storyline by like the third season. But the first two seasons, the perfect villain. He was just he delivered a performance where you were like, that's just a bad motherfucker right there. And he has to be stopped. That show had so much potential and managed to never actually deliver. Yep. Because of on the writers, what it could have done. The writers fucked up. When they up first showed show, you what the characters could be, and then they never get there. Yep. And then they build up to a big fight scene at the carnival, and then it just fucking peters out. It's like poof. It's like what the fuck? You built an entire season to a fight that nothing. How happened. about this? A samurai that can control time and space. Bad motherfucker. And then he comes back and he can't speak a single language. He just babbles they incoherently. Nerf the fuck out of him. A villain that's popping heads and stealing abilities, and then they're like, you know what? People like him. Let's make him a hero. <laughs> so in one episode, <laughs> they venomed him. They 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 turned him into a fucking hero because he he was locked in this time and space thing in his own brain, and he's like, I feel bad for murdering people. Yeah. Bitch, you're a serial killer. Yeah. 
and then they're gonna uh, turn around and make you the hero of the story. I, like it doesn't it, make any fucking sense. It ruined sense. part of what his character was. Part of the problem that his powers gave him was an insatiable lust to understand. Correct. And the only way he could understand was by dismantling things. Right. So to get people's powers, he had to dismantle their brain. Yes. Oh. Because he just, in him, he had to understand. It yes. was part of his power for, that, that he could understand. And then he had the, that he also had to understand. If you've never seen the show, the first two seasons are a work of art. I remember, I remember it being on the air. I remember seeing it. It was, it was stuff, huge, but. but they fucked themselves over. Mm. Um, all right. That's my pick. Ian? Tyler. Um, I'd probably go with that character from an anime. I'm gonna go with Scar from Full Metal Alchemist, also Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So not <laughs> I'd be mistaken for Scar from the Lion King. Not Scar from the Lion King. This uh, guy shows up. He's, he's, an ish, he's an ish ballin. He's got the dark skin and the red eyes. He's got a scar across his face. You don't. You find out later where he got it. Okay. Um, but he literally hates alchemists. He hates everything about him, especially state alchemists. And his ability is he's got these tattoo he's got this tattoo on his one arm and when he touches you puts his hand he's got to do is touch you yep if he touches any part of you he can dismantle whatever <laughs> molecules in DNA. he basically disassembles whatever he touches okay so he will touch your arm it'll blow a fuck apart so wait he's an alchemist that hates alchemists he uses alchemy because it's a means to an end because of what the alchemist did in his yep. home of Ishbal during the Ishbalan war i hate what i have become well he uses it so i yeah. must destroy he literally he will walk okay. up to dudes and like touch their head and their fucking head their brain will liquefy and I pour like out it. their ears <laughs> I like and he it. has that thing where, like he shows up you're like oh shit because he murders people right yeah. he's a you're serial like, you killer. know some shit is going yes. down when he shows up oh when he up. shows up he creeps the hell out of you because you know all he has to do is touch you <laughs> all i gotta do is get my hand on you because if i get my hand on you i'm a blow piece see that's what i loved about siler is that like he would Hunt, he's hunting down these heroes just yep. to steal their abilities, and he would show up, and he was such a fucking sociopath that he'd be like, "I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to help you guys," yeah. and then like <laughs> murder you and steal your power. You're like, yeah. "Fuck, he's so good." Anime has a lot of that. Anime has a lot of like really, really so good Scar. villains that are yeah, well like developed. That. Okay, Scar. Ed, what about you? Q, Ooh. Star Trek. The, Wait, the, so you're calling him a villain? He is almost always essentially a villain until he's not. Mm. Okay. All right. I go with that. He, he he's perpetually having the humans on trial for something they may not have even. It's like I think you're gonna do a thing. I'm putting you on trial. Wow, what a dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Touching base on the god in Moon Knight, right? Yeah. That's what she's like. I'm gonna kill you for things you may do. Oh or yeah. Will do in the future. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna be executed for something you haven't done yet. And and yes. there, there's a difference between omnipresent and omnipotent. And people confuse the two. One is you could be everywhere, and one is knowing everything. And one, like, there's very, and like, he's, he's, he can be everywhere, but he isn't everywhere at the same time. He isn't so, all knowing. So he, yes. exactly, there is shit that goes under the radar for him unless he's sneaking around in the background, which he likes to do. Right. So he's right. a dick, universal yeah. dick. Got I think we, we got three we got three good ones and there is nothing wrong with universal dick. <laughs> dick for all and cue the music. <laughs> Not to be mistaken for healthcare for all. <laughs> no, that's a different movement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us at the Sofa Kingdom Podcast. You can find us on all your social media platforms at Sofa Kingdom OFC. That's right. And you can also find us on YouTube Sofa Kingdom Podcast. Oh yeah. Like, share, leave a comment. Say yes. something funny. Talk shit. Whatever yes. you gotta do. Yes. Tell your friends. We're here for you. As your therapist, you can <laughs> lean on us. Talk to Ian. He's gonna walk you through any problems you Take have. everything we say seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and as actual facts. facts. Yes, that's right. We don't make any mistakes here. <laughs> whatsoever. No. Never. Despite what some of our guests may think. Yeah, Shay. We are accurate. <laughs> Always. And, and Matt is actually like four feet tall. He is. Yeah. Three, three foot eleven. <laughs> <laughs>